drugs were was Beechwood Propagation Series 128 and Lady Face Ballas Area. I might be saying that wrong. Um, Libertine Wild IPA. Uh, and I had a Brett IPA I did with Clausinii. And then I had a growler with lacto in it that I had floating around for a year or some experiment I was doing and it still smelled and tasted good. So I dumped a little bit of that in as well. It's incredible. I mean, it's like super dark fruit cherries and I added no fruit to this. It's been four months, almost to the day, it's like four months in a week, since I pitched the uh, doll the slurry of my Sour Black into that Sour Bond. Let's take a gravity reading and let's uh, give a taste test. All right, I'm at 10.05. <clears throat> that's low. Four months, that, that's a pretty good drop. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It might be close to done. Um, so let's give a taste test. It smells good. I'm not getting any plastic solventy band-aid none of that it just smells like clean grain sort of maybe a little bit of fruit like a touch it's complex a little bit of fruit the acidity is really nice on there uh, i'm gonna ballpark it somewhere around 3.5 3.6 just off taste test uh and it'll, it'll have more perceived sourness uh when it's carbonated whatever i got out of that first batch transferred great into this so far at least so yeah, let it go for another month or two. I might add fruit to this. Maybe, maybe pull off like a half a gallon and just see. Uh, I'm gonna maybe blend it if I need to. Maybe with a little more acidity. Maybe, but man, it's close. It's I mean, it's right there. As is, this would be a great sour beer. Yeah, let's uh, clip to a month or two months from now. Um... I don't think I'd blend this. Uh, it has a wine characteristic to it, but it's not diacetyl. It's like, it's like grapey, very grapey. I'm gonna take off a gallon of the big, of my three gallon one, it tasted really good. I call, I call it the sour bond number five, and keg the rest and put fruit in the other one. Found a mango. Um, I found the most ripe one I could possibly find. Look at the skin, look at that. How squishy that is. So what I'm gonna do, uh, this is only one whole one and this is about a pound. It's like a tiny bit under. I'm gonna cut this up and then freeze it for like a week. That should help kind of kill any bacteria in there and then thaw it out, get all the juices out of that. I'm not gonna start sand this. I don't worry about it. This thing is juicy. Oh my God, it's like falling off. Look at that. I'm gonna try a piece. Oh man, it's absolutely delicious. There is so much fruit coming off the, the sour. You know, I'm gonna keg two gallons of it and then the rest go into a gallon of this. And I think this is gonna enhance it in like a really cool way. So I'm very excited to see how it turns out. When you go into uh, like dense fruit like this, you know, peaches, apricots, mango, a pound per gallon, even upwards is a pound and a half per gallon is about what I have done and I you look like I get really good fruit that way. You can go less with raspberries and you know lighter fruit like that, but that's something the denser skin definitely up it a little bit. So this is a little under that, um, which is okay. I think looking at this and how juicy and mushy this is, I think this will impart plenty. With the bowl, we're actually 1.2 pounds. I'd say we're probably somewhere 0 0.8, 0 0.75 pounds for for the actual fruit. So I think that'll be enough. This is so juicy. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put this in the freezer. And a week later, do the whole transfer. Something I do, I'm doing a lot more often is using PBW to scrub my kegs with. Uh, it's just a really good thing to do, get rid of all the organic matter that can be in there, especially for sour beer. Here it is. Time to keg. First, I'm gonna take a gallon off and put it onto some mangoes. This looks pretty 
nice and thawed out here. Let it sit out for a couple hours. It smells amazing. I said this before, but you gotta keep the equipment that you use sour beer with separated from regular equipment, especially all the plastic stuff, because all the lactobacillus and bacteria and stuff can get in between the little scratches and stuff. So, better be safe than sorry. I filled it too far. I filled it too far. I meant to go up to the neck and I messed up. I gotta take some out of this somehow. Oh. This is not going well, guys. Well, <laughs> that's one way to do it. I'm a little worried about re-fermentation of like this going over the out of the top here. I hope it doesn't. But I also want to keep the peaches really submerged in there and not have it float on top and get mold all over it. So I'm trying to find a balance there. All right, I'm gonna let this go for another two weeks, maybe three. Let the re-fermentation happen, and then cold crash it and then bottle it. Okay, it is kegged, it is ready to go in the chest freezer. What I'm gonna do is let this carbonate, let the mango one do its thing, uh, bottle the mango one, and then do a side by side. So stay tuned uh, for that. Uh, I'd probably say about three weeks. I'll do a taste test on both of them. I was afraid this might happen with this beer. I tried to put as little oxygen or headspace in this as I possibly could. Fortunately, a little bit of mold got on this mango here at the top. So I obviously have to figure out a solution where I need to get my bottling wand past that somehow without like pushing that all into the beer. I could maybe try and scoop it out, but then I might just be dropping it in there as well. I think I'm gonna try and put the bottling wand around the edge of it as much as I possibly can. I think I just pushed a bunch of mold into it. I was gonna transfer it to cold crash. I'm gonna let it sit out in the heat here. Uh, well, the heat being in the mid 70s or so for the next three or four days. Maybe give it another good week or two and see if mold grows back on the surface again. If it doesn't, it should be good to go. It was mostly just on the fruit anyway, but I hate to put mold into this. So I'm gonna be careful and make sure there's no mold growing and take a peach reading too and see where I'm at uh, when I go to, to bottle this. So. We'll see. Finally, we made it. We made it to the tasting. This has been a long time coming. Very, very long time coming. You guys have been watching the whole process. Let's get to it. First, the non-mango one that was in the keg. It's been in the keg now for a while. I honestly don't even remember anymore. Two months? Mango one. I've not had this yet. Carbonating sour beers makes me nervous. This one seems okay. Let it go for a while. Three weeks? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's carbonated nicely. It's fine. Crazy. Now this one, you think would be about the same color, but it turned a little brown again. <laughs> my beers, guys, my beers. I'm, I have it dialed in apparently, totally dialed in. They're always exactly the same every time I make them. Now you would think it's oxidized, but oxidation would usually lead to problems where it would be like acetobacter, you know, vinegar, uh, would be the big one, maybe some like all bad bacteria flavors, but I don't know. It's really bizarre. The nose immediately is like huge fruits, like grape, 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 like it smells like grape juice. I mean, that's the best comparison. I mean, and it hasn't changed at all. It smells great. Really nice acidity. The grape is still there. Big fruity punch in the, in the taste. It's amazing how fruity this came out. No, no, vinegar, this, the ass level I think is really spot on in it, but man, that is very enjoyable, very quenching. It is absolutely amazing. The biggest thing is fruit. I mean, that is crazy how much it produced, and grape in particular. Try this, the mango one now. 
Not as much fruit on it, oddly. Yeah, this is fruitier. I am getting the mango in it, but more of a Cheerio thing, which I'll go to in a second. Not much mango. There it is in a, in a taste. It's in the taste. Really nice acidity, man, that's punching. I did a pH on these, reading on these, I think they're like 3.4, but it tastes like 3.2. This one, in particular, this one's like, oh, I'm like puckering. This one is less so. This one had some re-fermentation I did notice when it with mangoes were in it. So it probably dried out a little bit even, and maybe even acidified a hair more. I think fruit can add some acidity to uh, your beers. Really nice. Mango is very mild. Next time though for this, I'll add a little more mango and I'll probably do one where, um, do a puree, if anything. The puree on it, I think would get a little easier to use and sink to the bottom. As you guys saw, mold got on the top of this one, on the fruit, I should say. And it'd just be easier to work with. I could calculate everything out easier. I don't have to worry about particles floating around that could cause bottle bombs later on from the fruit. But yeah, this is it's really, really good. All right, the Cheerio thing. This has it too a little bit, especially when this warms up. The Captain Crunch thing, but more regular Cheerio. This has a little bit in the smell, just a little bit, but less so in the taste. What's there? Um, but this completes it better. I actually like this one a little better. The Cheerio thing is tetrahydropyridine. I think I'm saying that right. THP, as it's known. Um, and it's different, they're not 100% sure entirely what it comes from, but they assume it's an oxidative issue. But tendomyces can have a, a, a role in this as well. Let me read directly from the milk to funk site on, on this. It's, a contrib it's also attributed to the mousy urine in high amounts. Cheerios are Captain Crunch in low amounts. So that mousy urine thing I've actually had in wine before. Uh, every once in a while, at least in, in my opinion, uh, or cat pee, I guess is how I kind of describe it. Uh, but that could be something else, but that is interesting to know. Um, and there's a whole ton of history on this, which I am not going to go into. I'll link it in the, in the description below, so if you guys want to navigate this, you can. But essentially, there are some Britannomyces issues that can do this. There's a whole thing on Britannomyces, and, and it's leading causes essentially onto what it actually does so then it goes into all this into that and it goes into lactic acid bacteria as well so it's crazy great information on that um so there's obviously something going on here with some maybe lactic acid some with botanomyces um you know oxidate oxidation can play a role too that's that's from what i kind of gather out of that and from what i've heard too actually from other sour beer makers so it's interesting. Um, I don't know necessarily a way to really uh, get rid of it. I haven't heard anything anyone really talk about how to get rid of it. You know, obviously, regardless, l limiting your oxygen intake is massive. And if you, the, the little oxygen that you get into your sour aging beer, the less problems you're going to have. And Cheerio could be one of those problems. So, you know, it happens. I think what I'm going to do next time, or I think what I should do more often, and I don't, and I'm an idiot for it, is ferment in a different container above the amount that I need, then transfer into a smaller container so I can go all the way to the neck. Uh, that would be ideal. And then take gravity readings, which I'm pretty good about doing separating out about once every three months or so. Uh, and maybe take like three or four, and then that's it. And then purge the headspace with CO2 once you're done. Kegging would be ideal. Pushing out with, this, with the CO2 car carbonation cap like I do with my hoppy beer would be awesome. These are really enjoyable beers. Um, they turn out great they're so aside from that tiny little cheerio thing they're great they're very unique and yeah i'm gonna enjoy these so thank you for watching thank you for coming along this journey with me on my sour beer making and like subscribe all the good stuff and get out there and just make some sour beer you won't be disappointed unless you enter oxygen into it then then you probably will be